Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by. This is Pat of Pat's Home Craft. Welcome to my All About Winter series. Decorating and getting your home winter ready can be a snap with my DIYs and helpful ideas. Now let's get to it. I'm taking a mason jar Dollar Tree wall plaque that I've altered in the fall for my own personalized sign for my home and I'm going to create a winter scene for my winter decor without altering the existing fall scene. I wanted to be able to keep my fall and winter sign for both seasons so I can use them in the future. I'm taking this plastic piece and I'm going to turn it into an overlay for my jar. I want to go ahead and take this plastic piece and trace it out so I can cut it to the exact size. It is a very soft piece of plastic. I've come up with a really handy way of being able to add it on. I'm taking some Dollar Tree magnets and gluing them with my quick adhesive to the actual sign. Once they've adhered and the glue is dried, I'm taking the matching magnet pieces, placing them on, and then gluing that to the plastic piece. Now I can begin altering my mason jar plaque without worrying that I will alter it forever. I'm first taking Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to work on all the ground cover. This will be the majority of the painting, so this is the first thing that I need to tackle. I'm just placing one coat here and as you can see it does make a very streaky effect but that's because of the plastic and I will have to let it completely dry before I can add any additional coats. I'd like to take this time to talk to you about our challenge and the challenge host. This video is in part of the Flippin' Friday Challenge, hosted by Jamie of Border Bananas. Jamie has a wonderful channel full of thrifting, home decor, organizing, crafting, DIY, and cooking. She also has a second channel called Border Bananas DIY. Please check out Jamie's two channels. They will be listed in the description box, along with the playlist link for this challenge. And here I'm going to cover all of those pumpkins because they won't be part of my picture for my winter scene. And I'm just very carefully tracing out all the pieces that I do want to keep as part of the scenery. So I'm just being very careful. The good thing about painting on this plastic is that if I have any mistakes, I can simply wipe it off with my finger and keep going forward. The brush that I'm using has a very flat edge to it. I will be keeping the basket 
So I'm not going to paint over that, but I'm going to paint over all of these pumpkins. And now I'm going to paint the roof of my barn with the white. I want it to have the appearance of a snow covered barn. And now I'm going to add little details like the snow that would be on the window sills and along the framing of the outside of the barn, all in the windows. And I'm going to create a little bit of a snow drift up to the openings or doorways, anywhere there's a corner where snow can gather, it does gather up and pile up upwards to a point. And so I'm going to create that. And I'm just going to fill all these windows with a little bit of snow at the windowsill base. Now I'm going to just follow along and make that sight line of land filled with the snow. As I'm waiting for all of this to dry, I will go ahead and move on to other sections. And I'm going to start placing snow on my truck. This is really fun because you can play with it and just imagine everywhere that snow would fall and that's where you would place it. And I like this kind of a brush because I can do a very dabby spotted type of application which is perfect for snow. It gives that appearance of the texture of the snow. And I'm just putting some snow every once in a while in these grill marks in the front and on the hood. along the fenders. Now I'm placing the snow up into the windshield and along the door panels. And of course you'll have snow on the roof of the little truck. This is a great way of taking something that you love as a decor piece in your home and altering it without destroying the original and being able to use it. I love that it has our family name and so I did not want to alter it. I wanted to be able to use that in the future. And now I'm coming in and I'm placing a second coat because it has dried somewhat. And as you notice close to the truck on the right hand side above the hood, I've not covered the little, the side, the side view mirror. And look at how the snow really comes to life with that second application. I will make some shading in a moment, but first we need to have a base coat, which will be the white snow. And then we can add some shading and really give the snow some more definition and shape. But look at how pristine and white and 
this has completely altered already the look and the feel of the existing plaque. I want to use this basket for some goodies or I really haven't decided yet, but we'll see what I come up with when I get to that point. And as you notice, one of my trees has already lost most of its leaves, but I have several other trees that have the foliage of the red and the yellow, and so those will need to be altered. And we will get to that in a moment. And unfortunately, I did not press record, and so I will have to tell you what I did. I took this Waverly chalk paint and I covered over all of the existing trees, any of the foliage, and also the sunset warmth of the streaky sky. I also added it into the windows of the truck to give it a little bit of a, a quality that it either had ice on the windows and I added it also to the grill and at different points of the truck. I wanted it to have a frosted effect and I also added it to the windows and the entry areas of the barn because I wanted to give that frosted look. I've also added some white to the hood and I'm going to go ahead and add some more white at this point. Every time I add a little bit more white, it does have a more dazzling effect of the snow. As you can see here, I've really added quite a bit to the fenders and over the headlights. And I'm coming down over the hood just slightly and I'm also adding quite a bit of it to the bumper. Anywhere that would have a surface that would catch the snow, that's where you would put your snow. You would put it on the top of the truck bed and on the running board. And also I've placed some in the tires themselves. And now I'm taking a brown black mixture and I'm going to outline my trees. Even though they've already been, this one has already been outlined, I'm going to give it a little more definition with a darker color. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I come through with a white, it will have a more dramatic effect. And this tree will have all of its branches created because there were no branches there. And although the tree was a little more low hanging and almost as if it was a bush, I've decided to just make it a tree. And I can do that because the other painting is hidden. So I can make it what I want it to be. And now I'm coming through with a white and I am really outlining along the tree trunk and now I'm going to add some snow to the branches and as you can see the white against the dark branches and with the crystal background for the sky really makes the snow pop the white chalk paint really pops and I like to use chalk paint because it does have a very thick quality and seems to have a, a much brighter pigmentation than the acrylic paints. And so I'm just adding some more 
white to my branches. And now I'm just taking some silver lining and I am creating some snow drift effects in the snow, highlighting or actually not highlighting, but rather low lighting the snow areas where there would be maybe a road or a, or a snow bank under the truck. Now I'm taking a tiny bit of the brown-black mixture while the silver lining paint is still wet I am blending it in and creating some shading under the truck and also going up to the actual barn almost as if the truck drove from there. And now I'm taking a very dark green. It is a green that I mixed with black and I'm creating a Christmas tree in the back. My truck is carrying a Christmas tree and so I'm just creating it with a slight bit of fuzzy little branches maybe peeking out. And now I am creating a wreath for my truck grill and here I'm taking some mixture of green and white together and I'm just creating some highlights for this tree to just give it a little bit of depth I'm just using a very thin brush and I'm just dotting it and now I am coming through with the same small brush and I'm using black to give it further definition in the tree branches just giving it a darker hue. I didn't capture these steps of creating this wreath with a bow and little berries on it and a blanket that is coming out of the basket. Now I will show you how I did create all the folds for the blanket, I just took some silver lining and I just went with the flow of the pattern and the lumps that I had created and I just created some folds of the blanket. And the stem from a pumpkin that was here, I needed to cover it, so I took some of my crimson chalk paint and I added a little bit of white chalk paint to that and I just dabbed a little bit of it on some of the darker red and some of the lighter red and I just patted it and just kept working with it to blend it into the panel of the truck and now I'm creating a red and black flannel pattern on my blanket and I have to use a very small thin brush and I'm just creating a checkerboard pattern with the crimson and the black that I, I already used 
to create the blanket with. I'm just being very careful and just trying to create a checkerboard pattern. The trick is to just be very patient and it's not perfect because remember these are all folds so none of it is truly matching up. And once I'm finished with that I'm coming back with some black and I'm just softening up the very light edging of the blanket folding so it is it's not a very bright stripe of the folds it's softened and I'm also using black to create some shading where the blanket is laying and I'm going to just fill in the basket with a little bit darker color and I'm just doing a little bit of shading in the rim of the tires and also I'm going to take some more black and I'm going to place a small amount right under the truck this will give it a definite break from the actual snow and now in this upper corner I'm going to create a little snowman and once again this is a lot of patience because it is very small and a very small thin brush and I'm just using some silver lining to create the body outline and I'm using another small brush to create the two little stick arms and fingers for the snowman it's very delicate work Now I'm going to create a small top hat for my snowman. This is so small, you don't really need a lot of definition, just some very basic um, items on your snowman. And I created his eyes, his little coal mouth, and now I'm going to add a little red scarf because it's so small it's very difficult to become very intricate with a lot of details so I think the lesser details the better I did create some shading underneath the snowman and now I'm taking my black and I'm going to give some definition to the bow on the grill of the truck I'm just creating definite separation of each of the the bow sections and the ribbon section and now I'm taking this pick from Walmart and I'm going to create my little topper to my bow and I've got this magnet that will go on top and I'm just hot gluing little pieces that I cut from that pick very delicate just some berries and some of the branches with a little bit of snow on them almost like a small corsage and now I'm taking a small strip of the same buffalo check ribbon that I used for the rest of my jar and I'm going to just pinch it together and I'm just going to glue it in between all the berries and just push it in place not actually make a bow I hope you've enjoyed the transformation of my autumn jar to my winter jar if you have please give me a comment below I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would certainly appreciate your subscription to my channel. It doesn't cost a thing. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, be sure to hit that notification bell and click the word all. 
Don't forget to check out that challenge playlist link along with Jamie's two lovely channels. Remember to always look around you for the beauty in your life. It's waiting right there for you to see it. Until the next video, have a great day.